Hey, I'm Ollie at Techable. Now, everyone loves a new graphics card. I mean, more RAM is neat, and a new CPU can give you some great quality of life features, but nothing says more power like a brand new GPU. So with prices dropping and Nvidia's Lovelace and AMD's RDNA 3 just around the corner, will you be buying a new GPU this year? Well, maybe you should, but it might not be the one you're thinking of. The last few years have been pretty tough for the honest gamer trying to track down and buy a decent GPU, with the combination of COVID-induced chip shortages and spiking crypto market leading to outrageous prices. No supply, big demand equals not great for the consumer. But hallelujah, a mixture of a quiet crypto market and COVID measures relaxing means going in the other direction, with even Nvidia Founders Edition cards going for RRP over the past few weeks. Not to mention a used market aflush with old crypto cards at a hefty discount. So all good, right? Let's go and grab a 3090 Ti or a 6900 XT and do some top-notch 4K AAA gaming. But obviously the latest generation cards are just around the corner. And generally speaking, the only reason to go for last generation is that you can get a pretty good deal as often manufacturers and retailers want to clear out the old stock before the new arrivals roll in through the door. But Ali, this generation of graphics cards is great, and I'm happy with my 2K screen. So why shouldn't I just pick up that reduced 3070 Ti and be done with it? After subscribing for more riveting tech content, of course. Well, fair point, theoretical American viewer, and thanks for subscribing. In fact, the last few generations of NVIDIA GPUs and recent AMD GPUs have been low-key pretty great at handling most games. And though GPU manufacturers are always pushing us towards that 4K dream and the expensive cards needed to run it, the truth is even the six-year-old GTX 1060 can run most AAA games released today at pretty high settings around that golden 60 FPS mark. So it's diminishing returns then. Apart from more power for more pixels, what can Lovelace or RDNA 3 really do for me to make me A, wait, and B, pay a premium for a brand new product? This is where it gets interesting, so let me shine some light on it. You see, almost all games today are made using a process called rasterization and other techniques to create realistic 3D generated screens that can be generated almost instantly by your GPU, aka frames. GPUs are basically super calculators, which games ask to do thousands of calculations per second to create frames. That's why they're so good at crypto mining. For the longest time, what developers wanted to achieve in terms of graphics wouldn't have been achievable to generate live, because GPUs simply couldn't handle the calculations. So what have they done all this time? Well, they cheated, of course. Rasterizations and the techniques around this are in super simple terms the equivalent of not making the GPU do as many calculations in real time, but kind of preload it with the answers to maximize efficiency. Taking a practical example, if I take Hup and place a light behind him, you can clearly see his shadow. We know because physics, the shadow is the absence of light behind Hup. But for a GPU to calculate that, it needs to know all the variables, all the light sources in the room, the other objects, the services, the materials, so many little details, and it needs to calculate how all those permutations will affect the end result. A developer says, well, if the effect we want people to see behind Hub is a shadow, why not just pre-render the shadow in this environment so that's what the player sees? By doing this, when you enter the room, the GPU doesn't need to calculate every single variable, but loads just one previously rendered room, significantly reducing workload on the GPU and allowing it to concentrate on other important tasks. Full disclosure, this is a massive, massive oversimplification of the really, really, really hard work that gaming developers do. So please don't kill me in the comments section, but if you can find it in your heart to leave us a like, that would be great. In essence though, and at a really basic level, that is how games have been designed, and how less powerful hardware can still push out demanding titles at respectable frame rates and resolutions. But that is a huge amount of work on the part of developers, who have to painstakingly craft each little detail in game just for the appearance of natural, realistic looking conditions. If only they didn't have to. Trying to simulate real-time lighting in 3D environments is not a new concept, and if they could have done that, game developers and animators would have been doing it right in the exception of 3D graphics. But back then we lacked power. Today I'm deciding whether I go for a 2K or 4K monitor, which is actually a very minimal real-world difference. Shh! For funsies, because modern GPUs have power to burn. So let's do it now, real-time lighting engines. But Ali, they already did that with this here ray tracing! Ah yes, theoretical American viewer. Ray tracing, RTX, and all that good stuff. 
Well, to be honest, yes, RTX does add real-time ray tracing to video games, but there are three big problems in its current implementation. The hardware requirement is still ridiculous for ray trace games, returning a marginal real-world graphical improvement despite the special RT cores that Nvidia are trying to sell you. Also, because of the crazy hardware requirements, developers effectively have to build out dual solutions for each game so people can actually play, developing RTX and non-RTX solutions increasing their workload. And as well as that, RTX is not an all-singing, all-dancing solution. There are still plenty of time-consuming challenges that face developers, and RTX is just another consideration. So what developers really need is an all-in-one tool that will help them quickly and easily build out great-looking games that we can actually play. Hmm. And that's when we get to the crux of it. Unreal Engine 5. The last Unreal Engine, creatively named Unreal Engine 4, came out over 10 years ago, marking a major shift in industry graphics. Jedi Fallen Order, Gears 5, Borderlands 3, and even Fortnite are Unreal Engine games, and with the tool being made free in 2015, even indie game developers got in on the act, with games like Hellblade and Little Nightmares raising the bar of what is graphically possible for an indie game. And in that respect, Unreal Engine 5 promises to be no different. I'm sure by now many of you have seen the Matrix and Superman demos, as well as the Hellblade 2 trailer, and you can't deny just how good these games look. I'm not going to go into detail on all of Unreal Engine 5's new features, that's a topic for a whole other video. But suffice to say, Unreal Engine 5 is a game changer for small and indie game developers, making previously clunky, time-consuming tasks take minutes or even happen in the background as the engine tool whirs away. But one big thing to emphasise about Unreal Engine 5 is Lumen, the new light engine. Lumen is used to achieve global illumination, an effect previously achieved in rasterization by using a technique called light baking, which was what we were doing earlier with HUP. Render an environment once, and then map that lighting over the world to give the illusion that the game light is actually creating the lighting effect. But Lumen can do this in real time, and because it's so highly optimised, it's at a much lower graphic requirements than current ray tracing methods, and not reliant on hardware efficiencies like RT cores. Woohoo! It's all sorted then! I get my ray tracing, developers get some time off, and I get an Amphere card on sale that can run everything. Well, theoretical American viewer, it's not quite that simple. Yes, Unreal Engine 5 games are going to be more efficient than typical RTX techniques, but it doesn't necessarily make Ampere future-proof. First you have released and in-development games, which are going to stay at the same requirement, so Unreal 5 isn't really going to affect that. A second thing to remember is that Unreal Engine 5 is only one engine, and a lot of bigger developers, especially AAA developers, have their own engines which are still going to rely on those inefficient RTX strategies for at least the short to medium term future. Third, yes, Unreal Engine 5 isn't just about graphics. After all, Fortnite runs on Unreal Engine 4, and it's a basic graphical game. But with Lumen offering easy-to-use ray tracing to smaller developers, and the other great tools in Unreal Engine 5 to produce stunning in-game graphics, I can see the floor for basic game graphics being lifted substantially by this new tool. And let's be real, Lumen might be more efficient, but it won't stop people making graphically demanding games on Unreal Engine 5, and you're still going to need good graphics cards to run those graphically demanding games. So as the graphical floor raises, what happens next? Well, the ceiling raises as well, of course. Sure, right now game developers won't want to put out games that people can't actually play, either at full blast on PC or optimised on consoles. But with Unreal Engine 5 unlocking next-gen development tools and modern GPUs providing so much power, it's only a matter of time before developers ditch rasterization completely and we live in a ray-traced gaming world. So Wally, what are you telling me to do? I just want to get a GPU from a PC. Well, theoretical American viewer, as always, this decision really depends on what you want to get out of your gaming setup. Depending on your current GPU, screen, and game library, it could actually make sense to dive in and grab a well-priced Ampere card now. Ultimately, if it's a big upgrade for you and it will get decent performance for your resolution on ray trace games right now, there is a really good chance it'll hold up well with upcoming Unreal Engine 5 titles. Alternatively, it is highly likely for at least the next few years that, as other developers won't have caught up, a lot of games will still be made with these inefficient RTX techniques, and that will benefit from the new generation of Lovelace cards, which are likely going to have a lot more RT cores. The caveat, though, 
In time, you can guarantee that developers will emulate Unreal Engine 5's efficient software-based tracing methods, reducing the need for RT cores and, well, negating a major benefit of Nvidia's cards over AMD and the major benefits that Lovelace are sold on. We don't know exactly what Lovelace and RDNA 3 will offer, but it might be that the hardware for these new game development methods won't catch up until the next generation of graphics cards in a couple of years from now, which are more likely to optimize their hardware to benefit updated lighting tools and general development practices. So in short, sure, you can go out and buy a 4090 card in January and it will be a pro card for the next couple of years. But with the change I see coming in the gaming industry, you're paying a premium for architecture which might not be optimal in a couple of years' time. And frankly, yeah, we know that Nvidia and AMD did dial up their production to deal with chip shortages and the boom in the crypto market. But for me, the massive discounts and moving back of the release of next-gen cards really say to me that they're desperate to get rid of current stock. And I'm willing to bet that if manufacturers and retailers are this desperate to get rid of their current stock, it's probably because Lovelace and RDNA 3 aren't offering such massive performance gains that they think that gamers are going to go out and actually pay that premium for those new cards. So if you're itching for an upgrade, maybe see if you can get one of the current gen cards at a really good discount. They are available pretty widely at the moment. Or if you're happy with your old reliable, see if you can wait out the next couple of years because I think at that point we're going to start to see some really interesting things happen. Either way, there's no bad option here. I mean, they're all good cards. It's just about how good a deal you want to get and how optimal you want your upgrade path to be. There truly is no worse pain than the agony of choice. Well, that's my take on the future of graphics. Are you going to hold out for a next-gen card or maybe swoop in for a reasonably priced 3070 at Best Buy? Let me know in the comments below and uh, please give us a like if you like this video. I really appreciate it and uh, subscribe for some more great tech videos coming your way. I've been Ollie at Techable and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.